uh, so what you been up to? Uh, mostly work. Uh, I did a gig yesterday, which was fun. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, just, just up here in town, a friend of mine was doing, he released a book, and so he's doing like a mixture of guitar loops and spoken word poetry, and then I, I, I uh, fill in space with synth. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. all improv. This is his book here. Uh, it's called Vishuddha. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's some of them end up as lyrics in a, one or a couple of our other projects, but uh, for the most part, it's all just like his thing. You know, it's his main thing. What I'm here today to ask you about because you did a remix for us, and I want to pick yeah. your brain about what you did because yeah. you did a bunch of crazy stuff to one of our songs, and I love it. So <laughs> I love it too. So when you heard it, like, what was your approach to coming up, up with something to do with the remix? Like, how do you go about that? How do you tackle it? Kind of got a process when it comes to remixes, where it's like nothing's too precious, of course. Right. Um, but I generally, if I get to pick the song, which I, I thought Friction World was a good pick because it had like this Tom Waits kind of feel to it. Yeah. And had a very distinctive like sort of beef heart primacy thing going on with the uh with the guitar especially yeah and like okay so that's a really strong impulse for a song i'm gonna get rid of that because <laughs> that's like you know i i've probably mentioned pj harvey before to you but she's mm -hmm. like if you're ever in trouble with a song take your favorite thing about it and get rid of it mm. and then and start from there again and, and see where that goes. So that's kind of like my primary MO whenever I'm going into making a remix. I'll keep drums, I'll keep vocals because those mm -hmm. are, are two kind of like defining aspects of it unless I'm messing with tempo. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'll kind of push everything else to the side. And if it fits into what I'm doing, it fits in. Mm -hmm. But the, the descending flute line that you guys have in there uh, after each I guess stanza um, that yeah. was, oh that automatically sounds like a Mellotron to me okay uh, so I'm gonna replace that with actual Mellotron samples And then I was like, well, why don't I just put a bunch of all of my string synthesizers on here? Kind of the first thing I did after I cut all the a bunch of the instrumentation out was I affected the vocals. Um, mm -hmm. How you, did you, you have, affect them? Ran them through an EQ, and then I have Waves Tune, which I I just use. It's it's a vocal. Well, it's a um, auto tuner. Okay. But I don't use it to correct pitch. I use it to glitch pitch. So. Nice. Uh, and then I run that, so I get it. I get it sort of like in in sort of pitch blocks, mm -hmm. uh, like just naturally. So it's sort of glitching out. And then I ran it through a vocal bender and pitched it up a whole octave. I can't tell what got us here. It was all that much. Okay, I was, I was going to say yeah. Don't keep the lower timbre of your voice in there. The, the gruff quality and the and the kind of the fry of, yeah. of your vocals. I can't tell what got us here. It wasn't all that much. So it, it made a cool texture, mm -hmm. and then and because of that, I have that up in the treble frequency range, a higher mid frequency range, so that I can do more stuff down low. Yeah. So I got I got the vocals and the cuts done. Then it was time to move on to drums. I like big sound like when it's natural drums i like them to sound you know kind of flaming lips ish mm -hmm. uh, just because you know big smacky like reverberating off of things unnaturally and i knew that about halfway through the song it needed to change tempo feel and stuff so i did like a section that's kind of like electro drums and then the end part was yeah kind of an Inspired by um, the co you know Cocteau Twins. Yeah. Okay. They have a remix album that they hate, but I I really like it. It's called right. Other, and uh, 
Wait, what's it called? Otherness. Okay. It's it's like out of print, but you can find it on box sets and stuff. But it pretty much just takes uh, there's a song on there, Seekers Who Are Lovers. The whoever's remixing it, they they use the drumulator sounds. They put new, new drum sounds onto Seekers Who Are Lovers, and it's got this very distinctive like big spacey smack, even yeah. though it's a bit degraded mm-hmm. because everything that goes through the drumulator I think gets put down into eight bit but they they still sound big and full. They just sound degraded. Are you, you know. saying this on, This is for the first part that you're talking about or for the second part? This this is for the end part drum. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a drumulator and I'm trying to emulate Cocteau Twins, uh, that otherness track, but, and then I tried to do a kind of chopped and screwed delay with the drums there drums were kind of like all in different stages like they would come along as a result of like something else that would come up melodically mm-hmm. like i got this uh this moog opus three back mm-hmm. here and and i just kind of did a couple passes through the song with all the stuff all the elements stripped away and what whatever like came about from that naturally that's how I would build the rest of the instrumentation. Yeah. The new recontextualized progression of the Moog Opus 3. Of the way that it opens too, even with that synthesizer, it gives me, um, in the 80s when they used to make those apocalyptic, like people living in broken down buildings, like futuristic, but society's gone down sort of world. Like I see that as like a crane shot coming in, like showing a smoky Bronx, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Max exploitation. Films. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually, yeah, I love those low budget Italian exploitation. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Those got some really good synth soundtracks on them. Oh, very much so. Uh, the, you know, Hell Comes to Frogtown or uh, Escape from the Bronx. Escape from the Bronx is my favorite. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, uh, Toblerone. Toblerone. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> that descending line. Uh, it's very, you know, kind of Beatles-esque. Mm-hmm. Uh, very much reminds me of, like, late 60s psychedelia in rock. And, like, anytime I get it in, in there, I'm like, okay, we got to have some re- reverb and some tremolo on the guitar. And it's got to be big. You know, yeah. it's, and I've got this uh, Earthquaker Devices Nightwire pedal, and it's like it that you can adjust it. So it's a tremolo pedal, so you can adru- adjust it where the rate of it um, speeds up or slows slows down based on how hard you hit mm-hmm. the signal. Yeah, you might not notice it like right away, but if you listen real close to it, you'll notice that. It's not a fixed LFO on the tremolo. It, and it, so, it's affected by how you attack it. Uh-huh. It's a really oh. good pedal. It's like, uh, you know, on Radiohead, whenever they have, uh, I think it's in My Iron Lung, where, where Johnny will, will hit like a big chord and then uh, click on the tremolo pedal and then reach down and turn the rate down while it's happening. Uh-huh. Uh, all it's ringing out and and that's such a cool like quintessential psychedelic sound to me okay okay so that you know of course obviously psychedelia is a main impulse for doing any remix for me or or any collaboration for that matter so yeah also one more question the uh the drums when you did program the drums on the second part did you do that with an external drum machine did you do it internally i don't do uh Daw based sequencing. Okay. I don't. I don't really like midifying stuff. So it's a it's a Boss DR eight eighty that that does the middle section drums, and then after that for the drumulator sounds, I used the SP four hundred four. You know, I mean, it works for people that don't have the extensive amount of equipment that you do. Worked <laughs> <laughs> in a while, so yeah, I, it's not for it. It, it was a need. And it's right. because yeah, that's that's one of my primary goals as a sound designer or musician or anything is like I want 
I want the thing that makes the sound. I don't want just samples of the sound. Right. And then Plus, when you're bored, you can recreate the going back to Kelly by L O Cool J <laughs> song on it because it's literally all that was. Yes. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for talking with me today. And also, thank you so much for doing the remix on the album. I mean, I really, really, really appreciate that. It was my pleasure, man. Any old time you guys need a, you know, an extra superfluous tr track to throw up on streaming services, you know, I'm your guy. I'm your guy. Pew, pew. Uh -huh.